and welcome to part 5 of the Backrooms Game Lab where I'll be showing you how to add audio into the backrooms to make it like the actual backrooms where it has a fluorescent light bulb sound that's constantly playing. And I'm also going to change around the footstep sounds to make it actually sound like you're stepping on the carpet. And the last thing I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you how to make flickering lights that are kind of flickering in the backrooms to make the backrooms have more of an eerie ambience. The first thing we're going to do to start off is go to the Google Drive and we'll see that there's a new folder in here called Part 5 Backrooms Game Lab. If you go in this, you'll see we have audio and inside of audio, we have foot, foot, uh, light bulb sounds here and footstep sounds here. So we're just going to go back out to the Backrooms Game Files, go into Part 5, and we're just going to download the entire audio folder. As soon as it's done zipping, just go ahead and click on it and it should take you to your Downloads folder. And you'll see you have a folder here called audio and it has all the stuff that we downloaded. So let's go ahead and go back to Unity now and let's go to the project window, go to the assets tab and right click here. Now let's go ahead and press import new asset and now we just want to drag audio into the assets window. Not into one of the folders, just right into the assets window in one of the empty spots. So we cancel out of this. So if we go into this audio folder by double clicking it, we'll see that we have this light bulb sound. And this is the actual sound of the backrooms that's very iconic. And to put it into our game, all we wanna do is drag this to the void here. But don't drag it to an object, drag it to the void. And you'll see if you drag it to somewhere that has no objects, a new object will be created called light bulb sound. If you were to play your game right now, you'd hear the actual sound of the backrooms. But before I do that, I wanna go ahead and press loop right here. And this will make it constantly loop so that when it gets to the end of our audio, it doesn't just stop. So it's as simple as that to make an ambience for our game. But for the footstep sounds to actually make it sound like we're walking on footsteps, it's a little bit more complex. What we want to do first of all is go to FPS controller and we want to come down a little bit. You'll see that there's two things here called footstep 01, footstep 02, and these are under the footstep sounds list right here. So, I mean, it's pretty easy. All you really want to do is change this first of all to three, change the array size to three, and then come to the audio window right here. In here, we have three of our footstep sounds that I customly picked out for the carpet. Of course, you can get your own footstep sounds that don't actually have to be footstep sounds, but I just thought that these sounds would be most appropriate for stepping on a carpet. So let's go back to our FPS controller. And if we scroll down in the inspector window a little bit, you'll see that we have our three footstep sounds and we have our three footstep sounds in our project window. All you have to do is drag footstep one to element zero, drag footstep two to element one, and drag footstep three to element two. And to test it, just go ahead and click the game window and press play. Now you'll see that it is playing a backroom sound effect and when you step around, it kind of sounds like we're stepping on a carpet. So now that we have our footstep sounds done, um, there is one thing that I did kind of find was a little bit weird. Our light bulb sound was way too loud. So to change that, I'm just going to go to priority over here and drag it down a little bit. Now I'll go to volume and change it down to maybe uh, 0.7. And of course you can play around with that a lot more than me but I'm, I'm gonna bring my priority down to 200 and my volume down to 0.7. The last thing I wanna do in this tutorial is just make some of these lights able to be flickering. So to make flickering lights, it's actually pretty simple. All we wanna do is make an animation that constantly turns on and off our light object that is right here. So if we have an animation that's automatically turning on and off our light object, it will just it will look like a flickering light and that's pretty much all we need. What we're gonna do is first of all, come to light and I'm gonna rename this to flickering light. And I renamed it by the way, just by pressing enter on this, and then you're able to rename it. So you can do that to everything. I'll change that to just light. And yeah, this is now flickering light. Now on flickering light, I wanna first of all come to my assets window right here, right click it and press create. Now we wanna create a new folder that will hold all of our animations. So I'm gonna go and rename this to animations. And then I'll go inside of this. Now, if I go ahead and click flickering light, I can go over to the inspector window, go down a bit and press add component. Now, what we want to do is just add an animation and this will now allow us to animate our objects. However, there is one thing that isn't default to be on um, is our animation tab. 
So in order to actually animate things, we need to get our animation tab, which should be right down here. So first of all, come over to here where it says like there's a lock icon and three dots. Click the three dots. Now go down to add tab, go down to animation, and a new tab should open called animation. Now this looks really complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. We just want to first of all click create. And I'm just going to call this something called, um, when it comes up, I'm going to call this flickering light, just like that. Now I just want to press this red thing that looks like a record symbol. And now it's recording our actions that we do to it. So the first thing I want to do is, before I start animating is I just want to kind of explain this. Each one of these ticks here, like say 0, 30, 60, 90, 120, all these ticks, these represent how long, how much time has passed in your animation. So each 60 ticks is one second, meaning each 120 ticks is two seconds. So take that in mind when you're animating. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit with the scroll wheel, and I'm going to start animating this light. So what we want to do is just turn this light on and off. And to do that, I'm going to click light emission. I'm going to turn light on by just clicking it off and then clicking it back on again. And I'll go a little bit further out in my timeline. So I know 120 is two seconds. That means around, let's say around 360. That's, that's about six seconds, I believe. And if we go ahead and turn the light off, we'll see that when we get to this area, our light turns off. So we only want it to be off for like a, a split second. So I'll, I'm gonna come really close to this one. Might zoom in a little bit. And I'll turn it back on. Now that we have this flickering part right here that turns on and off, we can just select both of these, copy them, go a little bit further out, and then paste them. So now you'll see that if you were to play this, it would flicker our light. And depending on how fast your computer is, it will, it might vary on if you're able to actually see the flickering, but on most computers, you should be able to see the flickering. I just have a really laggy computer. Anyways, if we come over here, we have another flickering right here that turns it on and off. And I might just do a double flicker by just pasting another one of our flickering type animations right next to it. Now say you want your flicker to be a little bit longer. It's really easy. All we do is just go ahead and let's just go create a new one. I'm going to drag mine out this way a little bit so that I have more space to work with here. I might drag it out a lot more just to give myself more space here. And now I'll just make it longer between the, these two elements when it turns off and when it turns back on. So here it will turn off and then here it will turn back on, but it's, it's a, over a longer process of time. So yeah, that's honestly pretty much all we need to do. If we just go ahead and play our animation now, you'll see that our light is flickering. But the last thing, I, I think you may have noticed it, when our light turns off, our fluorescent light is still glowing. So to fix this is actually really simple um, and we probably should have done it sooner. But we just go click flickering light, we turn mesh render off and then back on again at the very beginning. And then whenever it turns off, we want to turn our mesh render off as well. And then our mesh render should turn on when the light turns on. So as you'll see now, when our light turns off, our mesh render also turns off and it stops glowing or at least it looks like it stops glowing. I'll go ahead and copy paste this over to our other flickers over here, over here, and of course this last one that's a little bit longer over here. So now you'll see that our light just completely stops glowing and yeah, it looks, it looks pretty natural. So the last thing that we wanna to do to actually apply this, because if you play it right now, it's not gonna work. We need to go to the project tab and we have something here called flickering light. Click it, go to the inspector, and we wanna make sure this loops continuously without stopping. Now, if we come back to flickering light, all we have to do is go ahead and drag this to the flickering light in the hierarchy. And now you'll see it down here, there's a new animation that has been assigned and it is called the flickering light. So now we wanna test this by just going to play our game right now. You'll see that our light is flickering occasionally, I think. I don't know. Yeah, there it is, there it is, there's a flicker. So it's flickering. I have a few longer flickers that are kind of more obvious to see. But yeah, if you have any problems, please tell me in the Discord server. Um, I will answer your problem. Animation can be tricky sometimes, but um, yeah, it's pretty easy when you get the hang of it. So if you have any problems, let me know in the comment section or my Discord server. But yeah, um, the last thing I wanna do in this video, and this is completely optional if you want to do it or not, um, 
it's up to you. I want to expand on this area a bit. Right now it looks really creepy, but if we were to walk out here, you'll see that we just fall into the actual back rooms. And um, let's go ahead and stop our game just by pressing Command P or Control P. And if we come back to our scene window, yeah, there's nothing here. So to fix this, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate our ground first of all by pressing Command D or Control D on it. Then I'm gonna hold Command or Control as I move it just to keep it on a grid. And I think we want to make sure these two are really close to each other. So for now, I'm going to turn this lighting off just so I can actually see. And yeah, that's much better. So yeah, I want to make sure these are really close to each other just like that. And now if we go ahead and copy both of these, duplicate them and move them forward a little bit, we can efficiently create a lot of floor without having to do one each, each one of these individually. So I'm going to drag these really close to each other. Now I'm going to select each of these. By the way, I'm selecting multiple at the same time by pressing shift. So if I press shift and then press them, I can select multiple at the same time. I'll drag these over here. And this is actually a strategy that I use a lot when I make my games because my games have just have so many, like there's so much floor, so much stuff going on that I really just need to have an easy way of getting these um, duplicating floors. So yeah, there is a hole between these, so I'm going to drag these a bit closer to each other, just like this. There we go. And I'm, now I'm just going to, I'll click all these, maybe one last time here, and just move them forward a bit with the red one. At least on my screen is red. It might not be red on your screen. And also see it's off to the side. We can change that just by coming right here under the scene window and changing it to center. So now it's just right in the center and it makes a lot more sense. So yeah, if I move this a bit, there we go. I think this is pretty good. I think this is pretty good. Now, if we walk out here, we won't. Oh, let me just make sure it's not like having a weird texturing issue. I might use this rect tool just to make it really exact. And there we go, perfect. So now it's aligned. And if we were to turn our lighting back on, it looks pretty nice, but we have no walls here. Luckily, we can just duplicate our walls and we don't have to make each wall again. So I'm going to turn the lighting off again so we can actually see. And I'm just going to go ahead and move. Du I duplicated that wall. Now I'm going to move it over here. At this point, hopefully you have the duplication memorized. If, if, if another wall just comes out like this, it's just because I duplicate it. You can kind of do this any way you want to, but I'm just making this in a position that I think kind of looks good. Um, yeah, if I move it over here like this, I think that looks all right. And I'm going to do a little bit more over here. So this is really just map making, and it's going to take a long time for you to make your map actually how you want it to look. But since this is a tutorial, I'm trying to do it as fast as possible. So I'm not really going to have a lot of details um, in my map. You'll see that it's not facing the right way and the detail is on the other side. All you have to do is rotate it over here, just like this. And now it's facing the right way. All right. So the last thing I'm going to do in this video is actually kind of set up for the next video. And um, in the next video, we're going to be making a door. But to make a door, we actually kind of have to have a doorway. So um, I mean, I'm not really going to be focusing too much on the doorway in this video. I'll do it probably in the next video. But I just want to have a kind of area going off here that kind of gets smaller. And then it kind of leads into a smaller hallway where there's a door. Of course, you can make your map so much bigger than mine, but this is a tutorial code, so I'm kind of short on time. So I can't really make my map looks extremely extravagant and giant, but please make yours as big as you want to. Um, size does matter in this case. All right, I'm going to drag this over here, rotate it. And this is pretty much all I'm going to do in this video. I'm just going to put one here and then duplicate this and put one over here. And now we have kind of a premature doorway for the next video. So there is one thing that we have to do though, is we have to expand this uh, this roof. Mm -hmm. So the same way we expanded the floor, I'm gonna expand the roof here. And then I'll click both of these using shift and I'll duplicate them this way. Try to align them as much as possible over here. And then, then I'll duplicate this, bring it over here, just like that. And then the last thing that we need to do with this roof is make one more click all of them duplicate every single one 
and then drag them this way. Now we have a wall or a roof that is, this is not a wall. Um, yeah. So again, to, to select multiple objects at the same time, all you have to do is click one and then press shift and then click another. So if you, if you hold shift while clicking another object, you can select as many as you want. So yeah, um, under here, there is one last thing that we need to do in this video. We need to expand our lighting because if we turn our lighting back on, you'll see it's completely dark over there and it's kind of creepy, but we, we need the player to be able to see. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and duplicate this light like that and then drag it over here. Now you'll see that we have some light over here. We can kind of put this over here in the corner, make it look really eerie. The ambience in these backrooms games, it means everything. If you can make the ambience look creepy, you don't even need a jump scare. So long as you have a good ambience, um, your game will speak for itself. I'm gonna drag one more light over here. And then that's all I'm gonna do in this video. I think if I drag it this way, yeah, that looks pretty, that looks, um, yeah, that looks all right, that looks all right. So yeah, that's all I've done in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and play my game by pressing this play button right here. So yeah, now that we're in our game, we'll see that we have our flickering light and we also have um, the flickering light. There, there's the flickering light, all right. And we also have our creepiness. It's, it's starting to take shape here. Um, we, we could do little things in the future, um, working on our head bobs, because you, as you can see, our head bobbing, it's a little bit crazy. We're moving really fast. Uh, it, it doesn't really feel natural right now. I might touch on that next video. But yeah, um, in the next video, we will be making a door here. And the door will allow you to open it. And we could maybe put a jump scare when you open the door. We will see. But yeah, stay tuned for next video when we actually start making our door and things start getting more interesting. This has been part five of the Backrooms Game Lab. I've been developer Jake and we will see you in the next one.